Hello and welcome to this Property Hub University course on how to get a great property deal. I'm Rob D and with me is Robbie and we're really excited to bring you this course because the ability to get a deal is one of the most powerful things there is in property. That doesn't mean it's an easy thing to do. So we've put this course together to help you overcome the most common mistakes and start grabbing yourself some great property deals. So let's have a look at what you'll learn. We're going to have a look at what it means to get a deal and why it is so powerful the big difference that even a small discount can make to your returns. We're going to have a look at where most people go wrong when they're trying to get themselves a deal. And then, really importantly, know for sure that the great deal you think you've got is really a great deal. And then we're going to give you seven ways to find property deals that you can start using right now. So let's start by defining what we're talking about. What is a deal? Well, we're defining a deal as the ability to buy a property for less than an established price. This is sometimes known as buying below market value or BMV, but people get into arguments about below market value and whether it's a thing, and it comes with some baggage, that term. So we're just calling it a deal. And a deal is important because it gives you two things. Firstly, it gives you a genuine discount, which is always nice to have. And secondly, very importantly, it gives you built-in equity. And in just a moment, we'll take a look at why that built-in equity can be so powerful for you. Like I alluded to at the start, in property, you can get a deal, whereas with many other types of assets, you can't. When it comes to buying a stock or a bond, the price is the price and there's nothing you can do about it. But in property, it is possible to buy something for less than it should be worth. We'll come to the reasons for that later and the methods for doing it later. But because that is one of the big advantages of property, this course is really valuable because it means that you don't have to settle for average. It doesn't mean that every deal you do will be absolutely phenomenal. That's never the case, even when you've been in the game for years. But if you can just do a little bit better than average, it can really make a big difference. So let's show you. Let's look at some numbers and prove to you why getting a deal is so powerful. So if we take our example property, and it's important to say these are rough numbers, they don't include stamp duty and fees, so it's just to illustrate the point. But if we take a property worth 150000 if you got a 75% loan-to-value mortgage, your deposit would be £37,500. The rent on that property, let's say, is 7000 200. So as it stands, the yield on that property is 4.8%. Now, after watching this course, you'll hopefully be able to go and negotiate a discount. And let's say you can get 10% discount. Well, the price you then pay is £135,000 on that same property. The deposit needed is slightly less. It's down to 33750 And the rent is still the same because it's the same property. So that's 7200 so because you've got it for less, but the rent is still the same, your yield has increased from 4.8% right up to 5.3%. Fantastic. But even better news is that you've just saved yourself £15,000. So you've got an extra £15,000 in instant equity. Who wouldn't want that? But in two years' time, the numbers look even better. So let's say that that property has grown in value by 10%, not because of anything fancy that you've done, but just because the market has grown by that much. That means that that property that was worth 150, that remember, you only bought for 135, is now worth £165,000. So now it's worth £30,000 more than you paid for it. Pretty good. So that's nice for you to know. It means if you were to sell the property at this point, you'd make a nice profit, but you could actually put that equity to some use. And this is where things get really interesting. You can then remortgage for 75% of the new value of 165,000. That means you can pay back your old mortgage and take out a new mortgage for 123,750 pounds. That's 75% of its new value. That means after you've taken that mortgage out and repaid the old one, you're gonna be left with cash left over it actually frees up £22,500. What that means is you don't have to go through the whole painful process of saving up an entire new deposit. So the deposit that you put down to buy the property in the first place with just under £34,000, you've now got £22,500 towards that. So you're more than two thirds of the way to having a deposit ready for the next property. So purely because you are able to negotiate a small discount and then get a small amount of market growth, it means that you're not far off being able to buy your next property. That is the power of being able to get a good deal. So while this is obviously very appealing, there are some common problems with getting yourself a deal. Because first of all, it's hard to establish when something really is a deal. 
Secondly, there are lots of sharks who will tell you that you're getting a deal or you're getting BMV when it really isn't. And third, well, a genuine deal is pretty hard to find. But don't worry, we've got you covered. In this course, we're going to help you with all of these. Before we talk more about what a deal is and how to get one, it's really important to touch on what isn't a deal. And that's because of those common problems that Rob just mentioned. There are a lot of deals floating around that really are not deals at all. And what isn't a deal, the most common thing that you'll see, is a discount from an inflated value. So that property that we just saw that's worth 150, you're buying it for 135. If it's actually worth 135, but someone told you that it was worth 150 when it really wasn't, then that's not a deal at all. And that means that there's no instant equity, you haven't increased your ROI, and you're not going to be able to refinance for a larger amount to speed up your progress. We make a point of mentioning this because you see it all the time. Just because somebody tells you that a property is worth a certain amount and you're getting a discount doesn't mean it's true. This is especially something you should be wary of if you see that deal being advertised all over the place and you get put under pressure to take that deal. Genuine deals do not get widely advertised and they do not hang around for a long time. If someone's pushing you or you see the same thing marketed for a long time by lots of different people, then that's a warning sign that it's not a deal. Really important to be aware of because so many people want to get good deals, you'll get a lot of people putting things in front of you that really aren't. So with that in mind, in the next module, we'll teach you how to be sure that you are getting a good deal. Click the next, we're going to look at how do you know if you're getting a deal? There are a few steps you should take when assessing any deal. Because as we looked at in the last video, just because something is being advertised as a deal doesn't necessarily mean it is. An asking price isn't always the market value. So follow these steps to make sure you're getting a good deal. First of all, you want to check the selling prices in the area. So if you're looking at a two-bed apartment, what are other two-bed apartments being advertised at locally? You want to look within quarter of a mile. You don't want to go too far out. And you want to make sure you're comparing like with like. So if your property is in wonderful condition, then don't compare it to ex-local authority properties and vice versa. If your property is in a town or a city, it should be quite easy to establish this because there should be plenty of other properties on the market. The next thing you want to do is check sold prices. So this is going to the next level and this will give you even more confidence because asking prices is good, but what's even better is getting sold prices. And you can do this by looking at the land registry, but actually you can access this information for free via sites like Rightmove. They have a section on their website where you can assess sold prices in a particular area. So just pop your postcode in, put the type of property in, and then look again within quarter of a mile what the similar types of properties are sold for. That again will give you more confidence that you're getting a deal. Now remember, if you're looking at sold prices from two years ago, you have to take into account that the market may have moved forward since then. So just be aware of that. But if it's very recent, then you've got something to hang your hat on and go, yep, this is probably what it's roughly worth. So there's a lot that you can do yourself and you can do it all from home without leaving your laptop. Just by looking at sold prices and selling prices, you'll get a long way towards knowing what the value of the property really is. But you can get even more confidence in your judgment by asking other people. So you can call local estate agents and ask them for their take on things. Estate agents come in for a lot of flack, a lot of the time rightly, but estate agents really do know their local market. And if you tell them about a property, most of the time they will have an opinion quite quickly on the kind of the range that that property would fall within. Obviously, they haven't necessarily seen it, so they wouldn't know what the condition is, but they'd be able to give you a range and give you some relevant information quite easily. And if they're saying roughly the same thing that you're finding in your own research, there's another data point pointing to whether this is a deal or it's not. Finally, the thing that you can do to get the most accuracy on this is to use a surveyor. This isn't something that you'll want to do for every property that you see because it's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you a few hundred pounds at least. But this is the way to get the most certainty about what a property is really worth. There's two reasons for that. Firstly, this is what they do. This is their job. It's their job to have a professional opinion about what properties are worth. So they'll have seen all the local comparables. They'll know exactly what data to be using and they'll come to their judgment about what the property should be worth. It's also the most valid piece of data because if you're taking out a mortgage on the property or you're looking to remortgage in the future, the lender will be using a surveyor to find out what they think a property is worth as well. Because whatever your opinion is, the opinion of the surveyor is the one that ultimately will matter. 
But do remember that the steps we've outlined are the same steps that a surveyor would take. They will look at selling prices, they will look at sold prices, and they will speak to local experts. And then they will come to a conclusion on the price. But remember, getting that validation from a surveyor may give you that extra peace of mind or comfort. I've already touched on how important it is to compare like for like properties that are in similar condition. If you're looking at properties that need a bit of work, there's no point in looking at a property seeing it £10,000 cheaper than next door, but it needing £10,000 of work. You've not got yourself a deal. You've actually just got yourself a lot of work for no real benefit. So be honest with yourself when you're assessing these deals. Don't get deal bias. If you put effort into finding a deal yourself, sometimes you can get carried away and look at the numbers in the best light. Make sure you're being honest with yourself when assessing the numbers. And only ever trust your own research. Speak to other people and use other people's research, but research their research. Don't take information from other people as the final piece in a jigsaw. Take their information and dig deep into it to make sure you've got confidence in their information. Just because something's really glossy or well-produced doesn't mean it's factual. So dig into the information and make sure you come to the same conclusions. Now we're going to look at the all-important step of how to find great property deals. Deals are out there. They do exist. That doesn't mean they're easy to find, but there are lots of different ways that you can go about it. The first is to find an absolute wreck of a property. If you find a property that needs a load of work doing to it and it's not very appealing and most people would get put off, then there's the potential there to do a deal because that property won't appeal to a lot of people. Anybody who's looking for a property to move into straight away will not be interested. However, note of caution, just because something is a wreck doesn't mean it's automatically a deal. Of course, if you've got a property that's in great condition and the one next door is worth £20,000 less, that doesn't mean that the one next door is a bargain. If it's going to cost you £20,000 to bring it back up to standard, then it's not a deal at all. It's just fair value. And it can be very difficult to establish what the fair value is when you've got to go and assess how much all the work is going to cost. But precisely because it'll put a lot of people off and it is difficult to value, it means that when you've got properties that are a right mess, there is the potential there for there to be a deal. There's an important point to remember though. If you're going around specifically looking for properties that need lots of work doing to them, you're having to actually walk the streets to find them and figure out who the owner is and put in a lot of legwork to find that property in the first place, make sure that you put a value on your time. There's a potential to get a good deal, but you have to factor in the cost of your own time in finding that deal and what you could have been doing instead. There are other methods that are less time consuming and it's all about choosing a method that's the most appropriate for you, bearing in mind the amount of time you've got and your skills and the situation that you're in. One of those ways that's a little bit less time consuming is going to auction. So going to an auction can be a great way to get yourself a deal. You can go along to the auction, do your research, put your hand up and walk away with a property at a great price. But you can also overpay. So do be careful. Just walking into a room and raising your hand does not mean you're going to walk away with a great deal. So you need to spend your time researching that property before you get to the auction. You need to be looking at the legal pack with a qualified solicitor who will give you their assessment. And you need to go and visit the property as well to assess the condition of it. Normally, properties are in auction for a reason. And normally, it's for one of two reasons. One, there's something wrong with the condition. Or two, there's something wrong with the legals. Dig in to find the reason why that property's at auction. Because if you're able to overcome that problem, then you can bag yourself a great deal. Now, going through the traditional auction process works for many people, but you don't have to wait for the auction day to bag yourself a deal. There are other ways to approach this. You may want to consider looking at the auction catalogue when it first comes out and trying to do a deal long before it gets to auction. If you look, find a property in an area that you know well, that you can get to view quite quickly and have confidence in its legals, then you can move to take that property away from auction by going in with a, a price. That price needs to be appealing enough to the vendor and the auction house, but it doesn't mean you have to pay over the odds. You can still bag yourself a deal. And you may be surprised at how frequently auction houses and vendors are open to selling pre-auction so their risk is removed and they know they've got a buyer locked in. Another way of approaching an auction is after the auction's finished. There will be many properties that haven't sold. Now, that doesn't mean 
they're a bad deal. It may mean that there was a lack of interest. It may mean there was a lack of information in the legal pack. Or there may mean that people have struggled to get around to viewing the properties because viewing days didn't happen. Whatever the reason, don't automatically write off properties that haven't sold. It's actually a great opportunity to bag yourself a deal. So look at the properties, speak to the auction house. They'll be open to telling you what sort of money they're willing to sell for. And then do your research. If you feel that after doing your research, it still stacks, put an offer in. Many people have done many good deals post-auction. So it may be an approach you want to consider. But a word of caution through all of this. I've touched on it already, but an auction does not automatically mean a good deal. You can dramatically overpay for a property as well. If the bidding gets a bit excitable, you get caught up in the rush. Be disciplined when you go to an auction house, have your cut-off price and stick to it. Another method for getting a deal is through estate agents. In theory, this should be one of the easier ways because when it comes to estate agents, rather than having to turn up at an auction on a particular day or go around pounding the streets trying to find a suitable property, they're all being marketed to you through the estate agent's website and on portals like Rightmove. Of course, the problem with this is the estate agent is working for the seller. They don't want to give you a deal. They want to get the best price they possibly can. However, it is possible to get deals through estate agents once you've built up a relationship. So there's no easy way. We're not going to tell you about a magical solution that works for absolutely everyone. You're always going to have to put time in somewhere. And when it comes to estate agents, it's building those relationships because they're still not going to do you a deal just because they like you. That's just not how it works. But they might have vendors where it's really important to them to sell quickly or have the certainty of a sale. And if you can offer that, they might be willing to put your offer forward in a positive light, even if it's not the very highest offer, even if it's less than what the property is strictly worth, because they know that you're going to be able to buy that property quickly. It takes time to build those relationships because a lot of investors go to estate agents saying that they're looking for a deal. If you ever speak to an estate agent, they'll tell you they're absolutely sick of investors phoning up and saying that they want to buy something, but only if it's at a discount. They might politely take down your details, but I can guarantee they'll end up in the bin as soon as the phone gets put down. You have to put the effort into building those relationships. But once you can, it is a route to getting deals. However, really important word of caution. A discount from the asking price is not a deal. You have to still follow the steps that we talked about earlier to establish what the property is truly worth and then make sure that you're getting a discount from them. A discount off what the estate agent lists the property for is absolutely meaningless. A lot of people think that they're getting good deals because they're getting a discount from the asking price, but that is not truly a deal. Don't be misled just because they give you a price. Work out for yourself what the price should be and negotiate down from there. Another avenue you may want to consider is networking. There are plenty of property network meetups around the country. We host many ourselves. Check out Property Hub meetups on our website to find your nearest one. Wherever you go, the room will be full of property investors. And not every property investor can act on every deal. So there may be opportunities to work with other people who are really good at finding deals, but aren't always able to execute on those deals and do a deal with them. They may want a fee, they may not. This is another way of potentially getting yourself a great deal. Some people in the meetups may do this professionally. So rather than just finding an extra few deals here and there, they may be at that meetup or networking event to find people like you and offer you their deals. But as Rob's just said, just because someone's nice and they've got a firm handshake and great eye contact doesn't mean their deal is a great deal. So the research point stands here as well, as it does through all our points. Do your research. If you're offered any deals, dig deep into them before taking action. And if somebody wants a fee up front before sending you that information, back off and back off quickly. That is not a good sign. The next way to find a potential property deal is to buy off plan. Buying off plan just means buying a property before construction has been finished. So that might mean buying it while it's still being built, or it might mean buying it before construction has even started. Often when you're buying off plan in that way, developers are willing to give you a discount because you're de-risking the development for them by giving them a sale early on, and you're taking something of a risk. So they need to give you a discount to incentivize you to do that. 
Now, we've got a whole course on Property Hub University about buying off plan because it is such a powerful way to get property deals. And there is a lot to know about it to make sure you do it properly. So go and watch our course on buying off plan to find out more. For now, though, I'll just say that exactly the same applies as for everything else. You need to do your own research. Just because you're buying something off plan and the developer tells you that there's a certain discount doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Their brochures may be glossy, but that doesn't mean that their numbers are accurate. Buying off plan can be fantastic, but a lot of people make big mistakes there as well. So make sure you go and watch the course if this is something that you're interested in. Another approach you can take is buying through developers once the development is complete. So you'll see many developments around the country that are complete and have show homes in. Now, quite often, a deal can be done. But at certain times, a great deal can be done. One way it's achievable to get yourself a great deal is when there's only a few properties left on the development. That developer is probably keen to get off site. So if you're able to take one of those units, though it may be more open to doing a deal. If there's a way you can buy more than one or the remainder of those remaining units, then a deal is even more likely again. Now you may not have the funds to do that, but if you have a network, you may be able to speak to other investors and get them to club together to buy the remaining units between you and negotiate yourself a great deal. Another time developers may be open to negotiating a great deal is when their half year and year end figures are close to being reported. Many of the national home builders report their numbers publicly and they don't want to miss targets they've set themselves already. So if they're having a slightly quieter year than anticipated, then you may be able to bag yourself a discount because they may be willing to sell at a discount if they haven't quite hit their numbers yet. But also many of the executives regionally have targets to hit and they want to hit their numbers. So you may have some areas of the country that have hit their numbers and they're relaxed and don't want to give a discount, but there may be other areas that are open to doing a discount. You can look online at each developer to find out when their year-end and half-year figures are reported, but you can also go into the showrooms and ask the salesperson representing that development when their year-end and half-year falls, because they will be targeted to similar numbers. So it does require timing, but it can bag you a deal. And finally, the last way of finding a deal that we're going to talk about today is using sourcing companies. Yes, there are companies who exist purely for the purpose of finding great deals and then passing them on to you for a fee, of course. Sources come in lots of shapes and sizes. You get everything from big companies down to individuals, and they often have different strengths. So some will focus on finding HMOs, others will focus on finding new builds and just about everything in between. The great thing about using a sourcing company is they do all the work for you. All the things that we've just talked through, they do all these things every day. They go through all these steps using all these different avenues to find the right property. They then do the negotiation, get that discount, and then pass it on to you. So you, in theory, don't have to do anything at all. Of course, it's never that easy, or at least it shouldn't be. While it is possible to find one of these companies and just ask them what they've got and immediately buy the first thing that comes along, you absolutely should not do that. Your research is as important as ever. Remember, as we said earlier, only ever trust your own research. Just because a sourcing company or individual is telling you that a property is a great deal doesn't mean that that's necessarily the case. They might be being dishonest or they might just be mistaken. They might really want it to be a great deal because they found it or they want to sell it to you. They might be looking at it in too positive a way or they might have overlooked one of its flaws. So if you are time poor, then using a sourcing company is probably one of the more suitable items on the list that we've been through. But just because it's less effort doesn't mean that it's no effort. Researching their research is absolutely critical to making sure that you're getting that good deal that you really want. So we've looked at how powerful getting a good deal is, and it's one of the major advantages property has over other asset classes. So if you can do it, take advantage. Why would you not strive to get a deal? It stretches your cash further, increases your ROI, and it allows you to build that portfolio at a faster rate. Now remember, in property, you have many options, and the way you source a deal gives you many options as well. Try no more than a couple of approaches at first, and find what works for you. If you've got lots of time on your side, you may want to consider some of the more time-intensive methods, such as auctions or networking. And if you're time poor, then you probably want to look at a sourcing company. But I think it's important to remember that get your goals and strategy lined up first and then it'll tell you what type of property you're going to invest in. 
don't be led by other people in your network or by a sourcing company on how you should be investing. Work on the goals and the strategy, and then you'll know exactly how you should invest, and you won't be led blindly by other people, because it may go in your favor, but it may not. So make sure you work on that first. And finally, remember, always do your research and follow our process to make sure it's a genuine deal. Never take anyone else's word for it. Look to build trust with the people you work with, but validate that trust. So that is a lot of ways you can use to find a property deal and how to make sure that you've got one once you found it. If you are interested in working with a sourcing company, you might want to check out our company, which is Property Hub Invest. Find that at the Property Hub website. But remember, exactly the same rules apply when it comes to doing your research and validating what you're told as it does when working with anyone else. Click the link in the description to continue this course on the Property Hub website, where you can save your progress, take a quiz for each module, and work towards your Property Hub University qualification, all for free.